Stanley? Yes. Hi, I'm sure you can see him now. Okay. <laughs> so, Stanley, what brings you here today? I've been feeling very sick, Doc. I'm getting fevers, chills, I've been vomiting, and I've been really feeling really weak. Hmm. Well, you seem to be showing some general symptoms of a lot of diseases. Have you come in contact with any animals or insects? Have you traveled anywhere recently? Yeah, I went to Africa recently. And did you get bitten by a mosquito? Yeah, now that you mention it, I think I did. Okay, I'm going to draw some blood and run several tests. Okay. Stanley, I'm sorry to say this, but it appears that you contracted malaria. We need to get you treated immediately. Malaria? How did this happen? How did a mosquito cause all this? Well, first off, a mosquito bite itself does not directly cause malaria, and not all mosquito bites will result in the contraction of this disease. The female Anopheles mosquito can act as host and carry the plasmodium parasite. If this infected mosquito bites you, then you can acquire the disease. But it bit me weeks ago. What's going on? How did this happen? Why am I only starting to feel symptoms now? So to answer your question, I will walk you through exactly what happens in your body from the moment you were bit until now. When the mosquito bit you, the plasmodium parasite was transferred from the mosquito saliva into your bloodstream. Inside your body, the parasite becomes a sporozoite, which first targets the liver cells, also known as hepatocytes. Over the next few days, the parasite will replicate within the liver cell, forming what is known as the schizone. As it continues to replicate, the infected hepatocyte can no longer contain all of the copies and will eventually rupture, leading to the spread of new parasites. These parasites are now referred to as merozoites. And their next target are the red blood cells. So what happens when they infect my red blood cells? So once the merozoites infect your red blood cells, they begin to furiously consume the hemoglobin and use the cell's machinery to replicate. As they replicate beyond control, they eventually cause the red blood cells to rupture and newly formed merozoites will go on to infect other red blood cells and replicate to form even more merozoites. This is also why individuals with malaria may experience anemia, which is a condition marked by deficiency in red blood cells and fatigue. Okay, that explains the weakness, but what about the fevers and chills? Stanley, the fevers and chills are caused by your own immune system. When the red blood cell ruptures, there is a release of toxic agents which trigger the immune system's macrophages to alert the rest of the body that it has been compromised. During this process, large amounts of pro-inflammatory cytokines are released. So the coupling of these events is the body's attempt to fight off the intruders. So these parasites are traveling throughout my body looking for more cells to infect and replicate it? Essentially, yes. However, when the red blood cells are infected, they begin to increase their expression of several adhesion molecules, which allow them to stick to the walls of several vessels. Unfortunately, the red blood cells that are not cleared from your bloodstream right away, they begin to clump together, which can result in vascular obstructions in several vessels around the body. Oh my gosh, that sounds serious. Can this be fatal? So the mechanism for cerebral malaria is not very well understood. However, individuals can experience headaches, convulsions, and even comas. As you can see, malaria is a complex system disorder with implications on the entire body. This is why it is so important that we control the spread of it and treat you immediately. Wait, I can spread this to others? Am I contagious? Well, not exactly. What I've just explained is the asexual stage, which means that the parasite replicates within your body. There is, however, a sexual stage through which the parasite can progress. During this stage, the merozoites develop into gametocytes, which are the sexual form of the parasite. So if another Anopheles mosquito that is not infected happens to bite you, the gametocytes will travel into the uninfected mosquito. Once inside the newly infected mosquito, the male and female version of the gametocytes can fuse and eventually form another sporozoite. The sporozoite will remain in the salivary glands of the mosquito ready to infect its next target. And as you can see, this is how the cycle perpetuates. Anyways, enough with the details. We need to get you treated. 